So, so good day, everyone. Uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. And for today's lesson, we are going to talk about my very own Excel program for flexible and rigid pavement for ASH to specification. By the way, the main objective for this design is to determine the flexible structural number that is if it is adequate enough or insufficiently poor to carry the projected design as such. And the things that we are going to find in our flexible pavement design are the SL, the provided and required structural number, and our thickness. We can find the value for our provided structural number if we can find our thickness. And for me to elaborate more how to use my Excel program, we are going to solve some problem given in our module. And in our problem number one, we are tasked to find the value for our SL. And by the way, SL is, uh, is our equivalent accumulated of 18 pounds or 80 kilonewton for a single axle load. And SL, it has the formula of design lane factor multiplied by the growth factor for a given growth rate times the annual average daily traffic and the number of axle on each vehicle and to be multiplied by our load equivalency. The formula for solving for SL is this one. And we are, it is going to process in our calculation sector and to be out to our the and the our output of our value will be here and for without further ado let's try to solve this problem and by the way the instruction is very simple just input the given values in the yellow boxes and if you are not given with any kind of values there are standard values provided here right down below where it is called the uh, suggested value sector. And yeah, in our problem number one, it is give, it is being stated that an eight lane divided highway is to be constructed on a new alignment. The traffic volume forecasts indicate that the average annual daily traffic or our AADT in both direction during the first year of operation will be 12,000. Hence, we are going to input the value of 12,000 in our AADP. And under the statement for our first problem, the value for our double axle single unit trap is being given, which is 33,000. And for our triple axle single unit trap of 17,000, which is here. 32,000 in a decimal value is 0.33. And for our triple axle category is 0.17. And below this statement, we've got the task to determine the design as well, given a design period of 20 years. And the percent of traffic on the design lane is 45%. Hence, this value of 45% is our design lane factor which is to be input here, which is 0 0.45. And below the statement, second statement, has the values for our growth rate factor, which is 29.78. And for our equivalency factor of our double axle single unit of 0 0.01, And for our triple axle load of 0 0.088. And these values will be calculated here, as you can see. And if you are wondering if there, are, there is no axle load category in terms of the single axle load, it is because that the value here given is passenger cars. 
and the equi load equivalency factor of a passenger car is 0 0.002, which is very small that, to the point that it is being neglected. Hence, here, for our SL, we've got the value for our single axle of 0 0.16081, and for our double axle SL of 0 0.38740, and for our third triple axle SL of 2.63429. And the summation of our total SL is only the values for the double axle load and the triple axle load, which is 3.02169. And basing for the solution given in our problem sample in our module, our value for our double axle single unit truck is equivalent and I also the value for our triple axle single unit truck and the to total SL here is equivalent to the output of our values here. Uh, so much with finding or computing for our SL, we are going to find next the value for our structural number and test I uh, test if it is adequate enough or insufficiently poor and the problem that we are going to solve in computing for our S sn or structural number is our problem number two and here in our problem number two it is being stated that a flexible pavement for an urban interstate highway is to be designed using the 1993 AH2 guide procedure to carry a design of SL of 2 times 10 to the power of 6, which is 2 million. 2 million. And for our reliability, since our problem states that a flexible pavement for an urban interstate highway, here below, here under the suggested values for our recommended reliability, there are ranges of values for uh, no, reliability that differs on the functional functional classification of roadways. And interstate under the urban has ranges of 85 to 99. And in our problem scenario here in the solution part, it is being stated that we are going to use the value of 99%. And since this reliability here is set already for to be percentage we are just going to input the value of 99 and for our standard deviation here the value is 0 0.49 and for our resilient modulus or our mr we are just going to you know, to input the value of our subgrade equals 6 times 1,500 since we are tasked to determine the suitable pavement structure basing in this given resilient modulus, which is 9,000. And in terms for our serviceability of initial and terminal, we got the value of 4.5 and 2.5 respectively. And this value will uh, compute or calculate the value for our required structural number. And we are basing our calculation on the formula given in our module with this. And as you can see, it is quite complicated. And we find ways on how to solve for the unknown value for our structural number. And the solver option in this Excel program is more likely similar to the shift, shift solve in our scientific calculator. And if your solver is not yet being installed, just like this you know, model or this Excel 2010, there's, there is a you know, process in how to install the solver. And first we are going to install first our solver. So in, to install the solver, just click File on the upper right corner, then Option, 
click add-ins and once you are being here click go mark check the solver add-in and click ok and with that the solver will be know, installed now and here the values that we've input on our know, required structural number it will calculate use in here this is our solutions solution on the calculation this is just based on the formula given above uh, yeah so for our dpsi by the way we are just going to differentiate the value for our initial and terminal serviceability index and here we are just going to use our solver to find our required structural number in which we are just going to click the difference pointer as our subjective object and click solver and our set objective is our difference pointer since the formula here is just somehow zero is equal to the equation the complicated equation given on finding the structural number and click solve and here we've got the value of 4.270 this is our required structural number using the resilient modulus of 9000 and since it is the 9000 or the what we are go, we are seeking we are just going to input it on the third structural number which is 4. 4.27 and for the other structural number we are just going to input or change our resilient modulus using this CBR value of base course material of 31,000 pounds per square inch and here we are just going to change the value into into 31,000 and then click solver again to ship solve and find the value for our required structural number and for our required structural number we got 2.752 and since it is the base since it is the base material for our CBR we are going to input it here in our first structural number, which is 2.75. And as we continue, next we've changed for our CBR value of sub-base course material of 13,500, wherein in which the resilient modulus in our required structural number, we are just going to change it into 13,500 and shift solve again or the solver again and there you go you have the value of 3.713 as our second structural number and since all the structural number requirement is being given we are going there we are going to solve directly the thickness that is requirement for us to solve for our structural number the provided structural number and test our structural number if it is adequate or insufficient and, and the problem it is being stated here that the value for our layers of Enough layers of our layer coefficient of our structure is 0 0.44 for the surface and for the base of 0 0.14 and 0 0.10 for our sub base. And by the way, the solution or the formula used in solving for our structural number provided is this formula in which 
the layer coefficient is just to be multiplied by the thickness that we are going to solve here plus the plus the base layer coefficient and multiplied by the thickness in the base and the drainage coefficient and lastly for the sub base if you are wondering there is no drainage coefficient for our for our surface the reason is that it is it is not being you know it is it is not you know existent existence existing in our you know, structure mismo and with that we are going to go back to the problem and the value for our you know, layer coefficient are you know, 0 0.44 for our surface base 0 0.14 and sub base as 0 0.10 so 0 0.44 0 0.14 and 0 0.1 and for our drainage coefficient we are just going to input the value of 0 0.80 here this one 0 0.80 on both base and sub base and these values will be processed in this calculation sector wherein the formula on finding the thickness in terms of our surface is just the ratio of our structural number one and our surface layer coefficient surface and the value for on finding the structural number is just simply the multiplication of our thickness times the layer coefficient and for our second thickness which is the base it is just the difference of our stru second structural number minus the new, the first new structural number divided by the value of our layer coefficient times to the drainage coefficient in which the value for our thickness is to be multiplied again by the value for our layers and drainage to get the value for our second new structural number. And for the third structural number is just the difference of our given or required structural number the third one uh, minus the second structural number or the new second structural number all over the multiplication of our layer coefficient in sub base and its drainage drainage coefficient and after you've got the value for our sub base it is going to be multiplied by the value for our layer coefficient and our drainage coefficient to get the value for our you know, third structural number. And this third structural number, by the way, is our you know, provided structural number. And this value of our new structural number is will be we're going to undergo a testing if it is adequate or not. And for you to get the better visual for our thickness, I have here the table that in that gives you the visual representation of the value here, in which the surface, it is our asphalt surface. Below on the asphalt surface is our base course, and under the base course is our sub-base course. And for us to test if it is equipped if it is adequate or not we are just going to input the values for our thickness layer coefficient and drainage coefficient here since we've got the value for our thickness as eight in the surface base four as our base and four inches for our sub base we are just going to input here eight inches then four inches four inches as for our layer coefficient, we are just going to copy the value given in our problem in our module, which is 0 0.44 in our, sub, in our surface, 0 0.14 in our base, and 0 0.1 in our sub-base. 0 0.44, 0 0.14, and 0 0.1. And for our drainage coefficient, it's just 0 0.8. And 
these given values will be undergo the calculation of here using the formula above this one and after calculating the val the given values we got the value for our provided structural number of 4.288 and since our provided structural number is greater than the required structural number we could say that it is adequate enough to carry the projected design SL of 2 million pounds. And yeah. However, on our module, the solution given here is different since the structural number, the resulting structural number here in the required section is 4.4. 3.8 and 2.6. The different, uh, the only different, and the reason why it is different since my Excel program is just a direct substitution process, and these they are somehow estimating through the graph method. And for you to get uh, to test if it is adequate or not, we are going to input the value for our given SN here, which is for SN3, 4.4, SN2, 3.8, and SN1 as 2.6. And here we got 2.6 for our SN1. And, and 3.8 for SN2. And 4.4 in our SN3. And this given values will be processed in the calculation section here below and we got the value or the output values here in our output section and here surprisingly we got the value for our surface of six and the base as 12 and the sub base of six and for a better visual representation of our values here we've got the the measurement or the visual representation of our you know, of our values in terms of the thickness of surface, the asphalt and base cores and the sub base cores. And to test if it is adequate or not on the in terms or to carry the projected design as all, we are going to change the value for the <coughs> for the value given to us in terms of the thickness which is ano, which is six <clears throat> six for the surface sub base is six and base is 12. and these values will be you know calculated using the formula given here and we got the value of 4.464 in terms of our you know, provided structural number. Ah, by the way, you are going to change also the resilient modulus to the original value of 9,000 to test if it is adequate or not. And here, yeah. Shift solve again. We got the value of 4.270. And since the, va the value of our provided structural number is greater than the value for our required structural number. We could say that it is adequate enough to carry and it is enough. Okay for uh, to be used in our pavement design. And that's it for <clears throat> flexible pavement design. And now let's go, let's go to the rigid pavement design. And And for my and for the structural, and uh, no, and for the structural pavement design in terms of rigid, for ash to specification, we are just going to get the value of the thickness of our concrete slab, since I the main difference between the flexible pavement design and the rigid pavement design is that flexible pavement design used asphalt as its you know, surface and in terms for the rigid we are using a concrete in its surface and here same goes with the flexible pavement design instruction we are going to use also solver to solve for our thickness 
and we are just going to input the values here in our yellow boxes. And as I've researched about this rigid pavement design, there is no problem given. I've found no problem in solving using the thickness in terms of rigid pavement design. However, in the website given here in Pavement Interactive, the 1993 R2 rigid pavement design, there is a formula on finding the thickness for our slab depth here. And <clears throat> same with the required structural number in the flexible pavement design, it is quite complicated to derive and equate it to a single unknown variable. Hence, we are going to use our solver as representat representation for our shift solve in our uh, scientific calculator. And the, this is the formula, by the way. And below the formula is the legends of, or the definition of each variable that we are going to oh no, find. And yeah, here, since there is no you know, problem man in our rigid payment design, we are going to input some random but acceptable values for our input to find our thickness in rigid pavement design. Um, so let's begin. For our SL, we are going to use 2 million. And for our reliability, we are going to use the 99%. And for our standard deviation, I guess we are going to use 0 0.49. And in terms for elastic modulus, there is a given value for our elastic modulus here. You can prefer here if the value is not given. So for me, we are going to use the standard, which is 4 million. And here. Four million. And if you are wondering how or where did I get the standard value for our elastic modulus, it is being stated also here in our website that the value for our elastic modulus standard is equivalent to here, 27,500 in terms of MPA and 4 million for our pounds per square inch. And in terms for the modulus of rupture, there are also value given here, basing on our elastic modulus. So, so our elastic modulus used is ano man, 4, 000, 4 million. We are going to use, I guess, 720. Yeah, we're going to use 720. And in terms of our drainage coefficient, there is a given here. Note that in the suggested values, you are going to use the values in our suggested values if a certain variable has no values given on our problem statement. Since it is not given, we are going to use the value of 1 as our drainage coefficient here. And as for our load transfer, there are some conditions here in our suggested values that you need to meet in order to get the value for our g factor and for random and acceptable values we are going to input the value of 2.7 again you need to meet the values or the conditions given in the statement in order to get the value for the standard in load transfer and in terms for our subgrade react or the k we are going to use the value of 84 na lang here, k value. And in terms for the serviceability, we are going to use the values before, which is 4.5 and 2.5 respectively. And yeah, the value for our Z is, it is indicated that it is the standard thermal deviation it is just going to be relying on the value of our reliability. 
and in terms for the change in PSI or serviceability index, it's, it is just the difference of our initial to minus to the poor, our terminal serviceability index. And the values are being input in our calculations and we are ready to calculate the value of our thickness by using the solver of course. And click the data. Under the analysis, click the solver. And here, we are just going to click solve. And yeah, we've got the value for our thickness of 9.879 rounded off given give which give uh, which gives us the value for our safe value in thickness of 10, 10 inches and the sub base of thickness of six and this is our visual representation in our when we are going to design for a highway in terms of rigid pavement design and that's it for that's all, and thank you for watching. Bye.